Welcome to the Amgen Biotech Experience Program. My name is Alia Katarna, and I'm the Site Coordinator for ABE Massachusetts. Today, I will be discussing Laboratory 4. During Laboratory 4, students verify the results of Laboratories 2 and 3, or Laboratory 2A. For Labs 2 and 3, students confirm that the ligation process resulted in the correct ligated plasmid product with the gene of interest, in this case RFP, and the antibiotic resistance gene. For Laboratory 2A, students are also confirming that they have the correct plasmid before moving on to the bacterial transformation. In both cases, students will use the technique of gel electrophoresis to verify their plasmids, allowing them to visualize the separation of DNA with this tool. Verification that the correct plasmid has been made is an important step in the process of producing therapeutic proteins. A great deal of time, energy, and money will be invested in producing the protein, and this cannot happen properly if the bacteria are transformed with the wrong plasmid. Before implementing Laboratory 4, the first thing that you want to do is remove all the equipment from your kits. The two important materials that you will receive will be the gel electrophoresis systems as well as your gel staining agent. So here we have the blue gel from Mini PCR. Next, we have the Run 1 from MB Tech. And here is a, an example of a traditional gel box, and this is a Photodyne gel box. It's important to locate your gel stain and instructions when you receive your ABE kit for Laboratory 4. This is because different ABE sites utilize different staining methods. In terms of preparation for Laboratory 4, it's important for teachers to make their gels ahead of time. If you are using a gel stain in your gels, it's important to make your gels as close to the lab as possible. This is because the stability of your gel stain is going to fluctuate. Next, it's important for teachers to count out how many lanes are going to be utilized for each student group. For example, students participating in Laboratory 4 will use five lanes. In Laboratory 4A, each student group will only be using two lanes. It's important to remember to set aside one lane per gel for the DNA ladder. In order for multiple student groups to use the same gel box, you may want to utilize a double comb gel. In this example, we have two combs of eight wells in one gel, allowing for 16 lanes. When you make your gels in advance, it's important that you store them properly. You want to store your solid gels in Tupperware and make sure that they're completely submerged in buffer. The DNA samples that will be loaded into the gel boxes were frozen after Laboratory 3 or Laboratory 2A. It's important for these samples to be thawed completely before loading into the gel. To do so, teachers should remove these samples from the freezer and have them thaw for about 15 minutes prior to use. Once these samples have been completely thawed, Students could then add a loading dye to each sample. The loading dye is actually solution two from laboratory one. As with laboratories two and two A, there will be multiple gel workstations throughout your classroom. It's important for students to keep track of their samples at all times, specifically when loading into the gel. We recommend having a gel sign-up sheet next to each of the gel boxes so that students can write down which DNA sample is in which lane. It's important to remind students that when pipetting into a gel, they should only go to the first stop. And this is really important. If they were to go to the second stop with their tip into the well, then their sample will just come out of the well. So we're going to go to the first stop. I'm going to take up my sample. I'm going to hover over the well. And I'm going to slowly pipette my sample into the well and only go to the first stop. So if you look at my thumb, I'm only at the first stop. Then I completely lift my arm up. Then I could let go of the plunger and get rid of my tip. So now I will show you what happens if you do go to the second stop. So I pipette my sample. Do the same thing. I'm going to the well next door. I'm going to the first stop, and then here I go to the second stop. So if you saw that, a bubble 
popped up and it dispersed some of my sample into the buffer, thus losing some sample that won't be run in your gel. The other mistake that we see students do is they puncture the well. So I will purposefully do this, which is a lot of fun. So I'm going to go, instead of hovering over the well, I'm actually going to go right into the well itself and I'm going to push my sample through and as you can see, the sample is not necessarily in the well, it's been punctured and now it's below the gel, it is now seeping through the gel and that is not good. That is the other common mistake that we see. In the first two lanes that I pipetted, you could see that the sample sits really nicely into the well. The gel is not broken and the DNA sample is ready to be run. However, in the third sample, in the third lane that I pipetted into, I broke the gel and broke the well so that now the sample is not sitting in the well but is actually underneath the gel. If we were to run this, we would get a very inconsistent result in the gel. If you have a short class period, your students may not be able to analyze their gel results that day. What we recommend is to cut power to the gel before your students leave and have your students look at the progression of the dye in the gel. It's important to also stress to students what their expected results are going to be. If students are participating in Laboratory 4, their digested samples will look like clean, crisp bands in their gel. Their ligated sample, however, will look pretty fuzzy, like a smear, and that's expected. For students participating in Laboratory 4A, they are just loading their digested samples and will only see clean, crisp bands, no fuzziness. Once your students leave, you can turn the gel back on and run the gel for the remainder of the time. Once your gel is complete, now you can visualize, and we recommend taking a photo as soon as it's done. If you're using gel green for your stain, you could illuminate your gel on a blue LED light. We recommend taking a photo of your gel as soon as possible. Pick up your phone, take a picture of your gel, post it on your class website, your class blog, or even post it on social media. Post it on Twitter with the hashtag biotechexperience.